I've been asked to uh, say a few words about why you should attend my, my workshop on making sense of the evidence at the San Diego Pain Summit. Well, you know, evidence-based practice is on everyone's lips in the world of pain management. I think most of us would agree that uh, evidence is important for informing how we best manage our patients. And most of us would probably make claim that the approach that we take to managing patients is at least to some extent evidence-based. But conversations around evidence, particularly on social media, often descend into a battle of conflicting abstracts from PubMed, each with very different conclusions, each seeming to back up the position of whoever's arguing for it. And for, for the person trying to really make sense of what's best for their patients and come up with a good answer, with the best answer, it can be very hard to negotiate that. In that light, what we often do is we defer responsibility to the people making the arguments, maybe to what the researchers themselves have reported in the abstract, uh, maybe to gurus or sometimes to the person who's shouting the loudest. But none of those things are really that helpful in helping us be confident that we really do have a handle on what the best evidence is telling us. In order to do that, you need to develop some skills. You need to improve your research literacy. You need to become more comfortable reading beyond the abstract of a paper and really trying to understand the meat of what that study did, who it did it in, how it did it, and what the results are actually telling us. Um, and that's what we're trying to do on this course. We're going to take two of the key designs that really dominate the world of evidence-based practice, and that is clinical trials and systematic reviews uh, of clinical trials. And we're going to work on understanding what makes a good trial, what makes a trial perhaps less reliable, uh, how confident we should be in a trial given its design, and then what do the results of that trial tell us, what don't they tell us? Uh, and should they really be used to change practice or confirm current practice? And then we'll do the same with systematic reviews of trials. We'll try and work out what is a good systematic review and how can we distinguish one from a bad systematic review? And, and what are the things that you should look for in terms of what the results are telling us, what they mean and how we interpret them? So the whole point of the course is not to turn you into a researcher is to try and help you to be a better user of evidence because I think if we're having these conversations in public, if we are committed to trying to be evidence-based, and one of the first steps is that we try and improve the level of those conversations. And in order to do that, we really need to improve our skills at understanding and using those evidence. And if as a community we can do that, then we'll come up with better answers, the conversation will become more nuanced and more sophisticated, and hopefully at the end of that, will be able to best help our patients. Because if we think this is difficult for us, just imagine how difficult it is for the person in pain. So I hope you'll come on the workshop. It'll be informative, it'll be very interactive. We'll have real world practical examples of critiquing papers in groups and discussing them. And largely, I hope it will be fun. So I hope to see you there.